uh, again, we finished 15.3 where we were doing some um, fractional, uh, rational expression <coughs> um, manipulating. And the goal was for this section today, 15.4, to add and subtract fractions. So as a refresher on how we add and subtract fractions, so 15.4 is addition and subtraction of rational expressions. As a refresher on how we add and subtract fractions, and I don't think you need to write this down, is that we want that common denominator, you know, and we want that common denominator to not be zero, right? If it's zero, these are both undefined, right? But the example says if we have a common denominator, we add the numerators. P over Q plus R over Q becomes one fraction, P plus R over Q. And the same thing works for subtraction. That's all we're seeing here. We can take two fractions with the same denominator and make them one fraction. And that's essentially what we're going to do today because at the end of 15.3, we were getting uh, common denominators. Uh, we spent a lot of time on least common denominators. And I would um, encourage you to go back and look at that lecture if it's not something that you recall doing because it's going to uh, or, or, or aren't quite up to speed on. Um, you know, you need to get up to speed on it because it's essential uh, to be successful in this section. Also, a reminder that I do have um, office hours on Blackboard. Uh, you go to start here. My office hours are for four or five. You go to the welcome on start here. And from year end, you'll see this uh, Zoom uh, Monday through Thursday, 4 to 5 p.m. If you have anything you want to talk about, anything going on, um, come to those office hours. I'll be there. That's the place to, to address any of this stuff, uh, any content or any concerns about you know, your grades or, or how things are going. All right. All right. Let's get into this. Kind of bounced around already for four minutes. Let's get into this. What are we doing? All right, so let's just do some examples, adding or subtracting rational expressions with the same denominator. So we'll start out with the base level of complexity. We're going to start out with examples where we're given the same denominator, and how do we deal with these fractions with the same denominator? Well, A is very basic. A says 1 12th plus 7 12 Anytime we are going to add or subtract fractions, we need to think common denominator. Do we have that common denominator? And we do, 12 and 12. So that means 1 12 plus 7 12 can become 1 plus 7 over 12, which is 8 12, which reduces to 2 thirds. All right, this is review from, I don't know, chapter 4, adding and subtracting fractions. Nothing interesting there. But with rational expressions, we are going to introduce some letters, and we need to be able to address things in the appropriate manner. Um, when we have these letters. So 2 over 5p minus 7 over 5p, I need to think I'm subtracting fractions, so I need to have the common denominator, and I do. So now I can combine these two into one fraction, and I get 2 minus 7 over 5p. All right, 2 minus 7 over 5p. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. And we keep that denominator. Now notice, I reduced on A, 8 twelfths reduced to 2 thirds. I can reduce here just the same. 5 and 5, those are going to reduce. 5 and 5 cancel each other, the 1 and 1. And we end up with negative 1 over P. All right, so write that down, take a look at that. This is our base level of complexity where we start out with our same denominator. Where are we gonna go from here? We're gonna go into ones that do not have the same denominator. We'll have to find that common denominator. We'll have to change the numerators accordingly. Then we can add or subtract and then reduce. That's the big picture here, all right? How do we deal with things that don't have the same denominator? Because I feel like we're pretty solid on same denominator fractions. All right, let's look at some more same denominator. We'll make it look a little bit more complex by giving you more stuff, but that doesn't that doesn't change what we're doing. A says 2 over 3D plus 5. 
plus 70 over 3D plus 5. I'm going to add fractions. That's all I'm doing. I think add fractions. I need the same. I need that common denominator, and I have it. 3D plus 5 and 3D plus 5. So this is going to become 2 plus 7D. 2 plus 7D over that same common denominator, 3D plus 5. Now, to finish this problem, on the previous problems, I remember, I recall that we reduced at the end. Can I reduce here? And that's always something to consider. Can I reduce here? Well, it's bad math to just go, oh, D on top, D on bottom, and cross them out. That is bad math. Do not do that. These things are married. This is like they're in parentheses. 2 plus 7D is one item. 3D plus 5 is one item, and I can't just cross out little pieces of those items. The only way I can cancel out here is if I can factor. If I can factor something out on top or on bottom, and then I can reduce, that's okay. But nothing factors out of 2 plus 7D. 2 and 7, there, there's nothing can factor out of there. They both don't have a D. 3 and 5, you can't factor out, and D doesn't have. So this is done. 2 plus 7D. Uh, over 3D plus 5, that's done. Can't reduce it. Now B, I would put a star by. B, in all my years of teaching this uh, topic, B is the type of problem where simple mistakes happen and it causes us to, you know, make a mistake, we miss the problem. Even though we're pretty solid on it, on a lot of things, understand what's going on we make a minor mistake here and I want to show you that what that is and so put a star by and maybe understand that we're putting a star by subtracting anytime we're subtracting things can go a little haywire for us we can easily make mistakes if we're not paying attention so what is this what do I what, what's going on here first thing if I'm subtracting fractions x squared over x minus 3 minus negative 5x plus 24 over x minus 3. The first thing I notice is I need a common denominator. Well, I have that, x minus 3. So this can become x squared minus, and then I'm going to put in parentheses, negative 5x plus 24. This is all being subtracted. And it's very important, and then I put it over x minus 3. It's very important to understand that this minus sign is going to be distributed to not only the minus 5x, but, but also to the positive 24. So prior, the three questions we've had prior, you know, I could have had parentheses around 70. I could have had parentheses around 7. I could have had parentheses around this 7. But I didn't have to because it was just one item. But now I have two items in my numerator, and I need to have them grouped. In the same way I argued on A, that these are grouped. These are grouped. It's very important because now when we subtract, this minus sign is going to do something. It's going to make this x squared plus 5x, and it's going to make it minus 24. This is the part where people make their mistakes. They're pretty rock solid on what they're doing. They get all the add ones right. They even factor if they need to. They get they do the add ones right. It's the minus ones where they forget to this part right here. Usually where they make their mistake is they'll make plus 20. Usually they get the minus minus 5 is plus 5. Where they make their mistake is this minus 24. They leave it positive 24. And it causes them problems. Now, I see x squared plus 5x minus 24 over x minus 3. I want to reduce. Can I reduce? Always the last thing to consider. Can I reduce? Well, on its face value, it doesn't look like it, but maybe I should recognize this as a trinomial, x squared plus 5x minus 24, and see if I can factor it. Are there factors of minus 24 that add up to 5? And the answer is yes. x plus 8 x minus 3. So x squared plus 5x minus 24 factors the x plus 8, x minus 3. And now I recognize x minus 3 is grouped. This x minus 3 is also a grouping that I can go ahead and cancel. And I'm left with just x 
plus 8 over 1, but I'll just leave it as x plus 8. This is this problem right here is like the heart of this section, kind of at the heart of it. Okay, we're going to combine rational expressions, we're going to pay attention to what the minus sign means, uh, to our how that's going to impact our numerator, and then we're going to factor at the end to reduce. So we've got this extra layer of complexity where we're going to factor and then reduce rather than just straight reducing like we could on A and B here. Okay, so now we're looking to factor to reduce. All right, let's try a few more. Now it just says add or subtract is indicated. It's not letting us know that these are common denominators, so we're going to have to inspect. I've got x squared plus 2 over x plus 3 plus 4x plus 1 over x plus 3. Let's go ahead and write that down. Let's work through it together. x squared plus 2 over x plus 3 plus 4x plus 1 over x plus 3. I'm adding fractions, so I inspect. I do have my common denominator, so I'm glad for that. I don't have to manipulate anything. And what this ends up being, I'm going to put this grouping in parentheses, x squared plus 2 plus grouping 4x plus 1 over that same x plus 3. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and group this because I've learned my lesson on what may happen with the distributive property if this was a minus. Now it's a plus, so it's not actually going to impact this, but it's not bad practice to just put them in parentheses. Okay. What happens here? Well, the plus sign gets distributed, but it doesn't do anything. So x squared, 2, 4x, and 1 becomes x squared plus 4x plus 2 plus 1 is 3 over x plus 3. So now I've taken two fractions and I made them one fraction. And the last thing I need to do is think, can I reduce? And right now that means, can I factor? And I've got, especially if I've got a trinomial here. And the reality is, like I said in 15.3, 15.2, we want to set you up, and by me, I mean the textbook, the instructor. We want you to practice reducing the factors. We're going to set you up. I'm going to, I'm going to predict that this will factor an x plus 3. I'm going to predict that because there's an x plus 3 down below, okay? And we're just going to set us, we're being set up to knock them down, okay? As I look at x squared plus 4x plus 3, I know that factors to x plus 1 times x plus 3, and there's the x plus 3 that I anticipated. Why did I anticipate it? Because it's on the bottom, okay? And we're kind of set up to do these things, all right? It's on purpose. So does that mean that sometimes it'll factor and not reduce? Sure. That happens. That'll happen not very often, okay? We want to set you up to knock them down, and we end up with x plus 1 on top. The bottom is reduced to 1, so we're not going to write over 1. We're just going to leave it as x plus 1. Let's take a look at number 4. 4t minus 9 over 2t plus 1 minus t minus 5 over 2t plus 1, and again, I'd put a star by this one in your notes, highlight it in a different color if that's what you do. Whatever you do to kind of point out the spots where pay attention here, really focus when you see this. I have a minus, and these are the ones where students tend to make mistakes. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and recognize that I'm subtracting fractions. I want my common denominator, and I have that, so that's good. I noticed that I have multiple items on each numerator, so I might as well understand these as a grouping, right? They're, they're married, as I've said previously, okay? And so what we end up with when we make this one fraction, 
we get 4t minus 9 in parentheses minus parentheses t minus 5 over 2t plus 1. 4t minus 9, bring down that minus sign, t minus 5. And that minus sign, here's the part that's important, that minus sign is going to be distributed. So what we end up with is 4t minus 9, nothing happens to this piece, but this minus t, most people get the minus t part, but this plus 5 is the part that most people miss. This is the part that most people make their mistake on. All right, and I'm just putting it out there so you're aware. And then I keep my denominator 2t plus 1. Simplify this numerator. I have 4t minus t. 4t minus t is 3t. I have minus 9 plus 5. That's minus 4 over 2t plus 1. I, can I reduce? Can I reduce? Can I factor? Well, this doesn't factor on top. 3t minus 4 doesn't factor. 3 and 4 don't factor. 2 and 1 don't factor on the bottom. There's, no, there's nothing wild going on here. Again, bad math, very bad math would be t on top, t on bottom, and cross those out. That would be very bad math. Don't do that. Okay? This is done. 3t minus 4 over, uh, uh, over 2t plus 1. All right, so that's that's what we're looking at. Now we're gonna we will add some complexity here. We've been lucky enough to do common denominators to start out with, and the next step will be the next layer of complexity will be what if they're different denominators? Well, we covered that in 15.3, and if you're not strong on 15.3 uh, for Monday, uh, then um, you know, make sure you watch that uh, that vi uh, the lecture from uh, from Monday. Um, very good, All right? So check it out, uh, and it'll and because what we're gonna do, you're, I'm gonna I'm gonna build on 15.3. Okay, I'm manipulating these different denominators. Okay, so there is a five step process to adding and subtracting these rational expressions. Okay. And you'll notice that step one, two, and three are just the step one, two, and three from 15.3. This is what we did in the 15.3 lecture video. We factored the denominators. We found the least common denominator, least common denominator, LCD. And then we um, rewrote each uh, with the least common denominator. And what this one means is we manipulated, we, um, we changed the numerator accordingly. It's a very mathy way of saying we change the numerator accordingly. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure you watch that 15.3 video. I go through it, okay? We do plenty of problems on this, so it'll make sense. Once we've changed the denominator to a common denominator, we change each fraction's numerator accordingly, and we'll add or subtract, and then we'll simplify. Okay, so it's it's five long steps, but some of them don't always occur. Um, but the idea is, hey, if we've got rational expressions with different denominators, and we have different denominators, we want to factor the denominators, find the least common denominator, rewrite the fractions with the numerators changed accordingly, then go ahead and do the operation add or subtract, and then simplify at the end. And whether simplify means reduce and factor, uh, then reduce is part of it. Okay, simplifying, you know, you might have to factor, then reduce, maybe you just reduce uh, from what you can see. Do I think you need these five steps in your notes? Not necessarily. 
let's be honest, uh, you could write them down and have very good looking notes. Are you going to refer to this? Probably not. Probably what you'll refer to is the examples that we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and start doing some examples. So different denominators, subtracting rational expressions with diff different denominators. We have 4 over 7k minus 3 over k squared. 4 over 7k um, minus 3 over k squared. So the first thing says to factor, step one is to factor the denominator. Now we went through this in 15.3. Our factors are 7 times k and k times k. And step two says find the least common denominator. Our least common denominator says find all of your unique. So here our least common denominator. All of our unique factors, those would be 7 and k. And then take the largest exponent. And here we have k to the first. And k times k happens to be k squared, right? So that means our highest exponent for k is k squared. So our least common denominator here is 7k squared. Over time, after you experience these enough, go through 15.3 if you haven't, and you see these enough, you should be able to start inspecting here and notice, hey, 7k squared is going to be my common denominator. Okay. So once we have that, that's step through two. Step three says change numerators accordingly. So what are our numerators going to change to? We went through this in 15.3. We're going to write each. I'm going to write 4 over 7k and 3 over k squared. But now I'm going to write it as my new common denominator, as 7k squared. And so I think to myself, how did I go from 7k to 7k squared? Well, I added a k to the bottom. So I better do that on top. Remember, change the numerators accordingly. Three or minus three over k squared. I want it to be my least common denominator of seven k squared. What changed here to go from k squared to seven k squared? I took it times seven. Okay, and now we have common denominators. Now we add or subtract. Step four: adding or subtracting gives us four k. Minus 3 times 7 is 21 over 7k squared. And then step 5 says to simplify or reduce. I inspect. Can I take something uh, or can does 4k minus 21 factor? No, I can't factor a 4 out of 21. This does Nothing's going to factor here. Bad math would be to cross out a k and a k. Don't do that. We're done here. 4k minus 21 over 7k squared. That's your five steps. Do you need to do your five steps out to the side like I did? No, but I'm just showing you these are how the five steps work in our process. Um, you know, with a few problems in your butt under your belt, hopefully this process is just something you do without writing it down, without thinking it through necessarily as five steps. It's just the process that you follow. Common denominator, change the numerators accordingly, add, subtract, reduce. It's not so much different than the, what we did in chapter four. There's just an extra layer of factoring that causes it to be a little uh, wackier looking. Number five says four over three X minus one over two X squared. I look at my denominators because it's a subtraction of fraction problems. My denominators are different. And so I need my least common denominator. My factors for three X are three times X. And my factors for 2x squared are 2 times x times x. Um, and so my least common denominator is going to be 3 times 2 times x times x, or x squared. So our com least common denominator is 6x squared. All right, I need x times x is x squared, right? So that's the highest exponent. 3 and 2 are unique factors, so I have to have them both. So 3 times 2 is 6. So here's my least common denominator. That means I'm going to write 4 uh, over um, 
instead of four over three X, I need to write it as six X squared, and then minus one over six X squared, and I need to change my numerators accordingly. How did I go from three X to six X squared? Well, I took it times, let's see, three times two gives me six, X times X gives me X squared. So I'm gonna change my numerator accordingly because I've changed my denominator. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Notice when I do this, I'm putting it in parentheses. It's very important. Um, we'll see later on how important that can be. We might have to distribute this through several items. Okay, so I put it in parentheses, whatever my change to the numerator is. To go from 2x squared to 6x squared, I just multiply 2 times 3 to get 6. x squared is already x squared, so that's all I change the numerator by. So this was step number 3. Step 4 says go ahead and do your addition or subtraction. Now 4 times 2x is 8x. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3 over 6x squared. And that step 4, step 5 says reduce. There's nothing that I can factor out of any of these things um, to reduce. So we're done. 8x minus 3 over 6x squared. All right, let's look at, um, well, let's just do some more. Let's, and we'll add some layer of, of complexity as we go. Notice here our numerators have multiple items. And so I would put a star by this one. This is a commonly missed problem because that minus sign is going to be distributed through um, how we deal with that's very important. So this is one where students miss often. Uh, if I anticipated giving all the students a bunch of problems, this would be one where I'd look for how they do, okay? So step one, recognize I don't have a uh, common denominator. I'm subtracting fractions, so I need a common denominator. I can't factor anything. My common denominator is gonna be six. Three times two is six. That should be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna rewrite my fractions. I'm gonna change my numerator accordingly. Two Q minus four, I'm gonna put in parentheses. And Q plus one, I'm going to put in parentheses. I'm going to group them because when I change my numerator here to go from three to six, I took it times two. And when I went from two to six, I took it times three. Right? From three to six times two, from two to six times three. So now I've got my common denominator. I do need to simplify both fractions. I do need to multiply this out. On uh, Monday, it was asked when these were our solutions, when we changed these fractions accordingly, hey, do we need to multiply it out? And the answer was, I don't think so. You don't need to then, because we were just writing them as separate fractions. Well, now, yes, the answer is yes. We need to, we need to multiply these out. So two Q or two times two Q is, 4q. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. This minus stays with the 3. This is negative 3 times q minus 3q and minus 3 times 1 minus 3 all over 6. Four Q minus three Q is just one Q minus eight minus three is minus 11 over six. So Q minus 11 over six. I can't reduce it. Nothing factors out to reduce. We're done. 
but definitely put a star by this one. This would be one to reference. Hey, what do I do if I've got multiple items in my numerator? Okay, so that's an extra level of complexity. Along with this minus sign, that's how we would address it. Stay organized, keep them grouped, change things, change your numerators accordingly with your denominators, and then just take your time going through, making sure that minus gets distributed. <clears throat> so that's one extra layer of complexity. What happens if we got multiple items in the numerator? And, you know, the next layer of complexity is going to be what if we've got uh, multiple items in the denominator? So this is kind of the culmination. Uh, example five, put a star by it. I'm putting a star by a lot of things today. But there's a lot of room for mistakes here um, if students aren't taking their time uh, and working through things. So what do we do if we've got um, denominators that look very uh, demanding, I would say, okay? Um, prior to this, we've had pretty simple denominators. Now they're getting pretty wacky looking. So remember our process is to find, is to factor the denominator first. So if I factor my denominator, I get x minus five here. And on this one, I get x plus five, x minus five. That's a difference of squares. We talked about it a lot in 15.3. Um, difference of squares. And so my least common denominator is all of my unique factors, x minus 5, x plus 5, and then to the highest power. Well, x minus 5 is already here. It's to the first. This is to the first. And x plus 5 is here. It's also to the first. So this happens to be my least common denominator. Should I multiply it out? No. Do not FOIL this out. Rewrite your fractions. Rewrite your fractions. So I've got one over x minus five, I'm gonna group it, plus negative 10 over uh, x minus five, x plus five, okay? Now notice that this one doesn't actually change. My least common denominator is already x squared minus 25. x plus five, x minus five happens to be my common denominator. So this minus 10 is not gonna change. Okay, but this does change. I go from x minus 5 to x minus 5 times x plus 5. That's my least common denominator. So notice, what did I change on bottom of the first fraction? Well, I changed it to x minus 5, and I added this x plus 5, so I better group it and do that on top as well. I distribute the 1, I get 1 times x is x, 1 times 5 is 5, plus a negative 10 is just minus 10 over x minus 5, x plus 5. x plus 5 minus 10 is just x minus 5 over x minus 5, x plus 5, and notice what happens. I can reduce here. This x minus 5, put in parentheses, it's a grouping. I have an x minus 5 on bottom, they're going to cancel. If it cancels, that leaves me with 1 on top, and on bottom I have x plus 5. All right, let's try this one. 1 over x minus 4 plus negative, x, or negative 8 over x squared minus 16. 1 over x minus 4 plus negative 8 over x squared minus 16. Okay, so I recognize I'm adding fractions. I've got different denominators. I need to find that least common denominator. So here I've got x minus 4 as a factor. Here I've got x uh, plus 4 times x minus 4. Difference of squares again. So my least common denominator is going to be x minus 4 times x plus 4. 
which happens to be this. It just looks different. So this one isn't going to change, but this one is. So I rewrite my fractions, 1 over x minus 4 plus negative 8 over x plus 4, x minus 4. And I need to change this fraction accordingly because I don't have my common denominator yet. I've got the first part. I need the second part. So I take it times x plus 4 on bottom, which means i got to do the same on top. So I get 1 times x is x. 1 times 4 is 4 minus 8 over x plus 4 times x minus 4. Notice the order doesn't matter on my factors. This is minus 4 plus 4. This is plus 4 minus 4. Same thing. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. We can rearrange the order of multiplication. Okay. Notice on the last problem I said, should I, should I FOIL this out and multiply it? No, because the next thing that's going to happen, and we saw it on the last problem, x plus 4 minus 8 is going to give me x minus 4. And notice that's going to reduce very nicely with my x plus 4, x minus 4 factors under, under in the denominator. If I would multiply this to x squared minus 16, I might not recognize that this is going to factor. So that's what I'm, so I wanted to hit on that point. Should I rewrite this as x squared minus 16 as my common denominator? No, don't do that. Leave them factored. Here's why, because you get to reduce right at the end. And we end up with 1 over x plus 4. 1 over x plus 4. All right, let's get into real complex looking things. All right, p plus 2 over p minus 1, minus 2 over p plus 6, minus 14 over p squared plus 5p minus 6. Go ahead and write this down. Make sure you write it down correctly. So now we're going to have a more interesting work towards a uh, least common denominator. So if I factor all of these denominators, that's step one, p minus one stays. p plus six stays, I'll, I'll put them in parentheses. This is a factor here, this is a factor here. This actually factors to p uh, plus six, p minus one. So my least common denominator is going to be all my unique factors, p minus one, p plus six, and then to the highest exponent, well, all of these are to the first power. And notice these two are contained here. So this is actually my least common denominator, p minus 1 times p plus 6. So that wasn't too bad. It looked pretty intimidating to start out with, but we find out it's not so bad. So now I'm going to rewrite my fractions, p plus 2, grouped over, that's a long line, uh, over p minus 1, grouped, minus 2, over p plus 6, uh, minus 14 over p plus 6, p minus 1. I'm going to change the numerators accordingly now. So this is p plus 2 over p minus 1. I need my least common denominator to be p plus 1, which I already have, but I need p plus 6. So that had better get added right here. Notice I group it. P plus 6 is already there, so I need P minus 1, and I better do the same on top. And here I have P plus 6, P minus 1. I have my least common denominator, so this one's not going to change. All right. Now we've got to, now we can rewrite this, um, but we need to simplify our numerators first. P plus 2 times P plus 6, we've got to multiply that out. P times P, this is, now we are going to FOIL. That's going to give me P squared plus 6P. 
plus 2p plus 12 minus 2 times p is minus 2p and minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2 if people miss this problem I wouldn't be surprised if this is the part where people missed it this plus 2 they usually get the minus 2p, but minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. This is usually the part where I see students make a mistake. And then we have minus 14, and that's all over our common denominator, p plus 6 times p minus 1. Now we can simplify the top, p squared. 6p plus 2p is 8p, minus 2p is 6p, right? 6 plus 2 minus 2. And then we've got 12 plus 2 is 14, minus 4 is 10, over p plus 6 times p minus 1. And then I think we'd like to factor this, but I don't think 10 is going to factor to give us uh, 6p. Oh, I made a mistake. I just looked at it. At plus 10, this should be minus 14, right? We get plus 2 and then minus 14. So this should be 12 plus 2 is 14, minus 14 is 0. So it's going to be plus 0 right here, but I'm not going to write it. So now we have p squared plus 6p over p plus 6 times p minus 1. The top does factor. I can take a p out of both. p times p plus 6 over p plus 6 times p plus 1. And look at that. The p plus 6 goes away. And our answer ends up being p over p plus 1. Don't reduce those p's at the end there. So I'm just going to write it over here because I've got room right here. So we end up with P over P plus 1. Again, don't cross out the P's. That's bad math. All right. That's the topic. Um, it's an extension of 15.3. If, if this kind of, if you're lost right here, you might want to go back and take a look at 15.3 and get the, it's probably a least common denominator issue, changing the numerator accordingly. Okay, take a look at that. On um, Friday, we're going to pick up at 15.5. But remember, you have um, tonight, or sorry, today I posted a quiz for you that's due Sunday. Sorry, when is that due? Give me one second. Let me refresh your memory. I want to tell you wrong. I know you got a homework due Friday. I know you got a homework, a uh, lab um, test due Sunday. And what did I make that homework do? Sorry, when did I make the quiz do? Sorry, the quiz is due Friday. So you got homework Friday, quiz Friday, lab test Sunday. All right, and um, if you have any questions, I'm going to hit stop record. If you have any questions, please stay and ask.